So I caught up with my buddy DK on the banks of the Nasara River. We decided we should put together an adventure to really test out the polar bear coolers and put them through their paces. So we decided to take the quads down south to a place called the Bongo River where we could catch some fish. Fish that by all accounts look a lot like this one. After a short debriefing and discussion of the trip, we decided we better go ahead and ice up the coolers while we still can. It's now 10 o'clock Friday morning, and the restaurant staff was nice enough to let us use their ice bin to ice our coolers down. So here's what we have. A polar bear cooler full of ice, Ziploc bags, water, beer, we have snorkel gear, we have machete, we have gasoline, we have a backpack, two quads, another polar bear cooler, fishing rods, ugly ass igloo cooler used only for storing tackle, and a gacker stick. So as we're leaving this perfectly good restaurant, I explained to DK that we didn't get anything to eat. He said not to worry. He knew a place along the way that would be perfect. So I said okay, and went along with it. Goodbye, civilization. Thirty miles later, big mistake. Now I know in our discussions we talked about getting on the road and living off the land and just eating what we catch. And that sounded great when we were sitting in the house next to the refrigerator. But I don't know how this is going to pan out in reality. So I may have taken the liberty to bring along a few extra things in my polar bear cooler. Like cheese, crackers, salami, and just the bare essential. Now if I can just get alone for a few minutes, I think I'll be in business. Well, well, what have we here? Finally, a little roadside assistance, if you know what I mean. While DK works on those maps over there, I'll take two to go. Get over on the right side of your quad now. I think we've hit the point of no return. This is where we separate the men from the boys in the cooler jungle. Believe me, it's all just about to be worth it. Because if you've never ridden a quad on the beach, it's the most exhilarating fun you can possibly have. So get the popcorn out and get ready. Here it comes. I didn't want to say anything, but I'm pretty much the man when it comes to riding a quad on the beach. If you ever see this look on my face, you know that trouble is coming. So get ready. Because in case you haven't figured it out yet, folks, I'm a redneck. And we're not in the good old US of A anymore. There is no one here to tell us what to do. We are riding free. And that insurance policy you've got back in the States, it doesn't cover quad antics in another country. This is pretty much like the Bonneville salt flat. I'm in fourth gear. I'm at 55 kilometers. I can see my buddy straight ahead of me, closing in on him. Fifth gear. I'm at 65 kilometers. This is the best adrenaline rush I've ever had. There is no help for 50 miles of here. I have everything under control. And the quad's in the ocean. Ladies and gentlemen, you are about to see an $8,000 panic attack.
So I'm pretty good with the quad on the beach. Finally, we reach what appears to be the end of the earth. This is what we came for. Complete, total solitude. Not another person for 40 or 50 miles. Nothing but what we have on our backs and what we brought in our polar bear coolers and each other. This is what it's all about. Holy shit! Oh, dude! All in all, we had a great time. We met some cool people. We saw some great places. We had some good laughs. And we even saw some wildlife. And we achieved our objective, which was to go on an adventure with our polar bear coolers, catch fish and keep it cool all the way back. So here we are. We put ice in this cooler Friday at 10 a.m. It's now 7 o'clock Saturday evening. This ice has been in this cooler for 32 hours, keeping this fish nice and fresh so that we could have this dinner, which is one of the best dinners I've ever had with my buddy DK. Cheers to adventure and polar bear coolers. Couldn't have done it without you.